Hi, welcome to this page of the notes. What we're going to do on this page is the exact same thing we've been doing. We're going to use the properties that we just looked at to answer a few questions. In this case, what I'm going to have you guys do is we're going to do a little bit of filling in the blank. I've told you what the property is, and then I've given you an expression that's incomplete. It has a blank in it. You'll need to fill in the blank using the property and figure out what goes there. So here we go. This is the commutative property. Remember, the commutative property says that order. Order does not matter. We can change the order the numbers are in for addition and multiplication. So let's go ahead and see if we can do that. I have a 3 plus the quantity 4 plus 5. On the other side, what I have is 3 plus the quantity. Now the 5 is first. The only number I haven't used is the 4. So let's go ahead and throw that 4 in there. I've changed the order of the numbers, but the commutative property says for addition, okay, you'll get the same answer, not a problem. The next one is the associative property. Remember, the associative property has to do with the grouping. The associative property says grouping does not matter when it comes to addition and multiplication. So let's go ahead and take a look at this problem, see if we can fill in the blanks. What I've done is I've grouped together the 4 and the 5, and then I'm multiplying by 3 on the outside. Now, what I'm trying to do is change the grouping. I still have the 5 inside the parentheses, but I need to switch what's inside that group with the 5. Over here on the right, the 4 was inside the parentheses with the 5. So on this side, the associative property would say, put the 3 inside with the 5. Now what I've done is I've changed the grouping. Now the 5 and the 3 are grouped together, and the 4 is going to be left out. And the uh, associative property says for multiplication, perfectly okay. This will get you the exact same answer as this. Those sides are equal to each other. The next one is the distributive property, and here's what we do with the distributive property. Remember, anytime you have a number in front of a grouping symbol and it's multiplication, you will multiply that number through the parentheses. So here we go. Let's see if we can fill in what these blanks are. Now, in order to do the distributive property, I'll be multiplying 2 by whatever this number is, but I don't know what that number is, except I look over on the left-hand side and I see a 2 times 7. What that tells me is that this first number needs to be a 7. So when I multiply 2 times 7, that'll get me my 2 times 7, which of course is a 14. Then the next one I would multiply 2 times 3, which appears to be the blank that I'm missing over on the left-hand side, so I would put a 3. 2 times 3, of course, is 6. Those are like terms. You can add those guys together and you wind up with 20. Both sides of the equal sign would be equal to 20. All right, let's keep going. In these problems, what we're going to do is give you a little bit of practice um, using... We're going to give you a little bit of practice using the distributive property. Um, again, should be very familiar with this from Algebra 1, but just give you a chance to practice it a little bit here. The way the distributive property works, and I would still go ahead and draw the arrows. I think they're very helpful. I'll draw them almost every time. Feel free to use them as well. We're going to distribute the 2 through the parentheses, and that is going to give me 2 times a, which is a 2a, and then I will add to that 2 times k, which will be a 2k. Now, at this point, you would then look to combine like terms. Remember, like terms, the same variables raised to the same powers. We don't care about the numbers. Twos are the same, but it doesn't matter according to our definition of like terms. Just the variables matter, and they're not the same variable. You cannot add these guys together, not like terms. Let's try the next one. Remember, the, I've given you this example problem because you need to remember with the distributive property that everything in front of the grouping symbol will get distributed. That means that you're not just distributing the 5, you're also distributing that minus sign along with it. Everybody gets distributed. So here we go. I'm going to have a minus 5 multiplied by 4 should get me a negative 20. And then I'm going to have a minus 5 times a negative 2x should leave me with a plus 10x. Look to combine like terms. If you have any like terms, in this case, we do not have like terms. The negative 20 doesn't have a, uh, an x with it, so my variables are not the same. This one doesn't even have a variable. There's no way to put those guys together. Try the next one. 
oh, uh, this one, I gave you this example problem. I, I told you guys whenever you are given something and there isn't a number written, you need to remember that there is an implied one there. Let me go ahead and put it in. So there's an implied one in front of that parenthesis sign. Please remember that that one is always there even if I don't write it and I will never write it. Neither will your textbook. It won't be written on homework, won't be written on quizzes or tests. You need to know that there's a one there. So we're going to distribute that negative one through the parentheses and let's see what happens. I now have a negative one times a negative two gives me a positive two and a negative one times a positive 10 Q be a minus 10 Q. Again, look to see if you combine like terms, but I don't have like terms, so I'm done. There's nothing else I can do. We've practiced using the distributed property. That takes care of all the problems on this page of the notes. Flip on over to the next page, and I'll meet you there.